How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 13, and we have a big game in front of us today. Number 9 Florida is coming to Conway, and the Gators are looking to upset our perfect season so far. We are 10-0, Florida sitting at just 7-3, but again, number 9 in the country, and it's number 9 in every poll. They are favored to win at our own stadium. They're on the road, and somehow... They come in with three losses, and they're expected to win this one. We lead them in most statistical categories. We are the higher overall team. But as we saw against Mizu in the last episode, overall might not matter. Sure, we ended up blowing them out at the end of the day, but we struggled to do so. So uh, we just got to hope for the best here. Florida, now again with the best record, three losses on the season end. Two of their losses are to the two best teams that they've played so far. Auburn, they lost to in week one pretty badly. And then it's a two-score loss against the current number six, Tennessee, uh, in their third week of the season. They also lost to a four in six LSU. Uh, I mean, looking at this, what's their most impressive win? A six and four Bama or a six and four South Carolina? So I like the way that that looks. They only beat an FCS team by nine. So we're going to come in hoping for the best. Try to give these guys their fourth loss of the season. Now, we have just a little bit of recruiting to do this week. Nothing too special. I think we have a visit to schedule. And then Ryan Turner, this 81 overall middle linebacker, is going to be unlocked. Uh, that'll jump us right back up in the mix there. After, uh, was that Arkansas State had a good visit. And, uh, well, we're going to give him 700 points. So that does it for our points on the recruiting. And then again, one visit to schedule. Aaron Wilson's going to come to the Notre Dame game in week 13. We'll hope that that goes well. Uh, let's take a quick look at our ESPN, our top 25 polls and our Heisman watch. And then we'll take a look at, uh, some awards, uh, finalists, maybe after the game. Yeah, we'll do that after the game. Not a lot of crazy stuff coming up this week, I don't think. Or maybe there is. Tennessee plays Cal in a very late uh, but very important out-of-conference game on this season. Florida will play us. Uh, Wisconsin and Illinois will play. And okay, there wasn't all that much. TCU and Stanford, again, a pretty big out-of-conference game late in the season. So uh, one of these uh, weeks where if we're going to see a lot of movement in the top 25, it's going to come from... Uh, an unranked team beating a ranked opponent. So uh, probably going to be pretty chalky, but this has been a crazy season so far. In the Heisman watch, we've got Marquise Jackson leading the race. He is absolutely dominating. I want to say he has almost 4,000 total yards on the season. He's up to 1,000 on the dot for his receiving yards this year with 12 touchdowns to go along with that. Uh, I don't know if he's run. No, he has not run the ball at all this year. Uh, but it's the kick return, the punt return, 1,900 kick return yards with six touchdowns. Uh, he's definitely going to hit a career high in kick return yards this year. I'm not sure if he'll break eight kick return touchdowns. We have a lot of games to play, though, uh, especially if we consider maybe a run all the way through the playoff. Like, that's, what, five games left still? So he definitely should be able to have a chance to get there. Punt return-wise, throw in another 580 yards and four touchdowns. That matches his career high. And, uh, I mean, this man is absolutely unstoppable. There's a Wisconsin running back separating him and Radon. And Radon's having a pretty solid season so far as well. Passing-wise, he's got a 219.2 rating, 131 for 202 for 2,700 yards. Uh, 29 touchdowns in seven interceptions. So already more touchdowns than he's had uh, or than he had his freshman year. And well, we're probably still on pace to match the same amount of interceptions. I would love to keep that single digits, but you guys have seen me play this game. So good chance that doesn't happen. Uh, just passing at a 64% rate. We do need to get that up. But alongside the passing goes 557 rushing yards on just eight carries. Another eight rushing touchdowns. Uh, not averaging as much as he did last year, but he's still been a very important factor, especially considering we don't have great running backs on this season. So we, uh, I don't see how we're not favored to win this one. I'm going to favor us to win, and we're going to get in here. Florida, just with a 90 overall, a 93 offense, ties ours, and just an 88 defense uh, gives us a pretty big advantage in that category. 
The Gators, well, I know for a fact I want their cool uh, helmet, this 2019 homecoming helmet, maybe the 2020 throwback one. Uh, but we're definitely going to change things up for them. Uh, do they have a good alternate that we can do that on? No. Okay, well, we're going to go away. We're going to go with the 2020 throwback helmet. And we're going to go orange pants. Interesting look for Florida, but I like it. And for us, man, it's been a while since we've changed things up. I think what we're going to do is go with our home, but then just throw on the white pants on the day. Uh, this is a combination we haven't seen often, so let's give it a shot. Coming into this game, Florida has easily, I would say, a top 50 offense. They're not destroying people, but they're also doing enough. They're getting a solid amount of points. Uh, defensively, uh, they're good at stopping the run like us, not great at stopping the pass, and they give up a solid amount of points. Three visits uh, on this week. We're not going to really worry too much about it. Rushing for 100 yards is the only one that we can realistically try to force, so we'll see if that can happen. All three of our top players on hot streaks for them. It's a kicker, a running back, and a defensive tackle. Those are high overall. It's 98, 96, 95. Uh, we'll hope for the best. And I know they have some injuries. It's a right guard and a corner. One probable, one questionable. So this is likely going to be a pretty healthy game. Both teams just bring in their best. And we'll see who comes out on top. We could not have asked for a more beautiful day here in the late fall as Brooks Stadium is absolutely packed to capacity, all 80,000 fans in the stadium as we win the coin toss and we will elect to kick this ball off. Until they prove otherwise, I think in this game, we're going to make it so that the kicks that we give them are returnable. I want to try to get lucky, make a little bit of a gamble and see, oh no, if we can get them in bad field position, it's Frederick having to get the tackle on the return man. So already the risk not paying off as Florida starts this one pretty much at the 40-yard line. First down for the Gators. They're going to step back to throw, and the quarterback's going to run immediately. Can we get there with Phillips? We can. And it's going to be a loss of a yard for Florida as the quarterback had nowhere to go on the scramble. They're running back the second best player on the team. I wouldn't be surprised if they give him the ball. I'm guessing this one's going to be a run, and it is handed off, and the running back has nowhere to go as Durham Finch drags him down. It's third and nine, and we're going to come out and see if the zone can work well enough. I'm going to utilize the defensive end, and it worked perfectly to get pressure on the quarterback, but Brent Davis was open just a little bit too quick. Let's try just a small blitz on this first down. They will step back looking to throw, and we leave the running back open, but uh, we only give up three yards, so I'm definitely fine with that. I'm just hoping that the defense plays even a little bit better this game than they did last week. We certainly don't want to be uh, in that same situation where our defense is struggling to get off the field. Logan Smith with the tackle for loss on that one sets up the third and long for these guys. And again, over the middle of the field, they've got a guy open. Just not there in the coverage. Florida successful on their first three pass attempts. Has me a little bit worried. They're going to go with the option. We brought the blitz with the linebackers. and We find the quarterback five yards in the backfield. Doesn't pitch the ball away. Is this maybe our chance to get off the field? Five wide now for them as they bring a man in motion. And it is a jet sweep. We're there with Don Riley. Got picked up on the block, but Spencer Stanley was there to finish the job. On third and 17, certainly, we should be able to get the stop here. Expecting them to throw. It's going to be a draw, and the run up the middle has a lot of space. He breaks a tackle. But finally, the cavalry arrives, and we tackle him before the line to gain. So we will expect this kicker to make it. He is 98 overall, but definitely going to be okay with just giving up three points on this opening drive. The kick is up, and that was right down the middle. So Florida takes an early lead, but it is, unfortunately for them, just three to nothing. All right. Well, this is our chance to take the lead early in this game, and maybe if we're lucky, never look back. Marquise is obviously going to bring this one out of the end zone. The blocking is impeccable in front of him. Jackson down the sidelines. 43 isn't going to get the tackle. And just like that, Marquise takes what his seventh of the season. 106 yards into the end zone as we will take a four-point lead without our offense having to step on the field. I am very tempted to say that Marquise Jackson is the best college football player I have ever seen. 
Uh, it's just unbelievable what he's able to do. The blocking on that return, though, was honestly what freed that up because that was some really, really good blocking. We've allowed them to return two kicks, and they've taken them to the 40 and the 35-yard line, so we're going to be uh, forcing some touchbacks for the rest of this game. This one a run out towards the edge, and I over-pursued the angle. Uh, thankfully, they didn't get too much extra. Florida is, though, really bringing some interesting looks so far in this one. Second three will make the shift. They're going to run it towards the edge, and Phillips dragged him down, but he's able to fall forward, and Yancey gets the first down. Try to make sure that we stay disciplined on defense. Again, looking to throw, and oh, pass got broken up and almost intercepted. Big fan of that play. First incompletion now for the Gators on that one. Bringing Smith on the blitz. It's a run up the middle. They've got some space. The blocking was fantastic, and they get eight yards to force a third and short. I'm taking a risk here. Bringing the blitz with the linebackers on this one. They're running it, and there's nowhere for them to go. They lose two yards, and it brings up a fourth down. John Taylor just ate his blocker alive and found the running back. And it's going to give us a chance to increase the lead some more. If we can just have a good drive, we'll be looking good. Marquis selecting to let this one go into the end zone. And who am I to tell him what to do? If he wants the touchback, we're taking the touchback. With just a minute and the 36 left in this first quarter, our offense has taken the field for the first time. And we're going to run the ball on first down, give it to Mike Fontaine, and see what our running game can do today. I think that's a big key for any of our games is... If we can establish the running game early, we should have a relatively easy time. This one's going to be picked off. No, Williams comes down with that. Oh, that was a really risky throw, but it works out in our favor. I just want to continue to execute like that. First two plays work well. We get the first down, and we'll go with a read option on this one. Right on keeping it. A lot of space. Maybe not picking up the blocks. And oh, no, he took a shot from the safety. Tried to throw in the jab step to... Maybe get a chance to get to the edge, but that did not work. And this is going to be a safety blitz as we're going play action. Uh, expect to see somebody open for deep if we have the time to get the pass off. I'm throwing it up for Marquise and no. Oh, I get hit while we're throwing. Can't get rid of it. It's a loss of nine on the sack. We also had Jonathan Williams open on that play, so that's pretty disappointing. Third and 13, the final play of this first quarter. We're going to be looking for Marquise. He turns around and, oh my gosh, Radon sailed that one by a mile. So that is going to be the end of our first quarter. Uh, not disappointed with the way it ended, but the offense on their first drive is stalled out, and we're going to have to punt the ball away. Wind is in our face now for this punt to start the second quarter, so we'll put it away, and I hope that the coverage gets down there. Without problems, Brooks needs to get this tackle. He gets picked up on the block, fights back, and, well, we run Aaron Jackson's out of bounds, so not the worst result. Try to stop the run on this first down. Just feel like it's coming, and it is. They go up the middle. Spencer Stanley gets pushed over. Again, though, we're only giving up three yards there. That's not too bad. I'm just going to continue to blitz on these plays. I want pressure on these guys as much as we can. Quarterback has a man open, and they get the completion, but short of the line to gain before he goes out of bounds. We get this third and three, and we're bringing some pressure, interestingly enough, with the uh, corners. And it's all too late. Phillips gets bodied by what I assume is the tight end there. And the Gators are starting to move a little bit this drive. Uh, a chance for them to take the lead if they could find the end zone. We're going to hope that's not the case, though. Quarterback outside the pocket. Oh, my gosh. I just missed. And, well, thankfully, he got sucked behind his blocker because he should have had more than 11 yards there. We're going to rush a lot of guys on this one. I feel like the run's coming. It does. And there it is, the stop in the backfield. That was a great tackle. Don Riley with a, a big one there to drop the man for a loss. On what would have been a big gain if he hadn't got there. This one a run towards the edge. Don Riley trying to get there. We almost over pursue and he actually got to him. The stiff arm cheese is enough for the first down. Really utilizing the running backs now for them. We're going to go play action on this one. I see somebody open. Don Riley sees the quarterback though. And he's going to get credited for a sack. Even though it's really not for a loss of any yards. And maybe a little bit foolish. But I'm planning on this being back-to-back -back passes. The running game has been so good. And they will hand it off. Plenty of space, but Phillips is there to get the tackle. So again, now a third down for Florida to contend with. What can we do? 
to slow them down on this play. They will step back looking to throw. Somebody's going to be open, and there it is. Too late. Just reacting to it, and the tight end gets open. Florida has been in the hurry up for almost this entire drive, so not a chance for the defense to get a breather, and that's going to be exactly what we needed. A false start from the offensive line gives us a chance to make some subs. Crucially, it also backs them up outside of the 10, which means it'll be a little bit more difficult for them to find the end zone. First and goal, they will step back, looking to throw, and they're going up for it in the corner of the end zone. Oh my gosh, he had a man open, but he couldn't get a foot in bounds. Felt like we just got pretty lucky there. 110 yards for Florida's offense to our offense's 10. We are still in the lead, and uh, the run up the middle. He's not going to get in, but he is right there on the goal line. Well, we can't allow that. I'm bringing the pressure up the middle. Can't allow the run. Focus in on the running back, and it's an option out towards the edge, and Don Riley gets to the quarterback before he can safely pitch it away. So we hold, and it is now fourth and goal. Again, expecting this quarterback to make this kick, but even with it, we will still have a one-point lead. Plenty of time left here in this half. I just want the chance for our offense to have a good drive. Uh, good field position would certainly help with that. Let's see, can we get some blocking? So far, not good. Marquise trying to stretch, looking for anything, and we just barely get past the 20 on that one. Three minutes and three seconds is what we have to work with. We don't necessarily need to pass, although on first down, we will be looking for the passing game, and through the air, we just get an incompletion. Our offense has left a lot to be desired the past couple of weeks. Radon starts the game one of three, and well, I'm going to be forced to go with the read option, try to make sure that we get positive yards, and let's slide down. Let's not get injured and get a couple of yards there. I'm taking a risk on our second, third down attempt of the day. So we're going to give this to Mike Fontaine up the middle and the blocking. Good enough to allow him to get to the line and fall forward. We've got this first down. What can we make of it? Trying to get near midfield. Oh my gosh, the pressure coming immediately and we're going to get sacked for a loss of 10. Radon had about a millisecond to work with before the pressure was in his face. Very disappointing. Trying to go to the air again. I don't really trust anything, but there is a wide open Jonathan Williams. I don't think he's fast enough to find the end zone, but he is certainly fast enough to get us down to the 25-yard line. Completely unguarded there. It's first and 10 with a minute and 45, as we'll hope for the best. Throwing the screen to Sean Stewart, and he's got nowhere to go. <laughs> first time I've run that play, it didn't work. Got to be conscious of the clock but i'm not necessarily worried about it yet again stepping back to throw and there's a quick one to bo lamb of course and he's got 13 yards when bo lamb comes into the game my goodness he seems to make plays so frequently uh interesting decision here we're gonna run a little counter and mike fontaine gets a pretty solid carry there let's go in the hurry up after the six yard gain we're in the Maryland dive, so not a whole lot of options for us, but we're going to go triple option and hope for the best on this one. See if we can make the right read. And soon right on right up the middle, completely untouched until, wow, that was a late hit in the end zone. Uh, he gets up just fine, and we are going to increase the lead here. 42 seconds left in the first half. Good job from the offense to uh, fight through the adversity on that drive. And I said I wasn't going to allow them to anymore, but kind of letting Florida return the kick, and it works. Stuck at the 20, and we burned off a few of their precious seconds there. All three timeouts for the Gators to work with. We'll expect some passing, and we're going to come out in the nickel. Get that 3-3-5. It's a slip screen on first down, and Taylor was there to deflect it. I thought maybe we had a chance to get the interception. It was a fantastic start to the drive. Can it continue? We'll hope for the best. Definitely bringing pressure with Don Riley on this one. Just got to try to do anything to get to the quarterback, and he finds Jason Miller through some traffic and gets nine yards. And they're just going to let the clock burn out. I guess they're worried that they don't convert on third down, and they have to give us the ball back. So Florida says we're fine being down eight at heading into the locker room, but unfortunately for them, they have to give us the football anyways. So... Uh, I mean, a chance now to give ourselves a 15-point lead if we open strong to start the third quarter. Uh, defensively, I've been happy with the way we've played. We've held them to two field goals, and we have a stop. 
decent enough tackles for loss. Offense stalled out on the first drive, but found their footing late in that first half. So to start this third quarter, let's see what the offense can do this time. Hoping for the best and, uh, well, while we're returning this kick, potentially for a touchdown, go ahead and hit the like button. Oh, well, you didn't do it, and so we didn't score. So maybe now you go down and hit it. <laughs> uh, regardless, we get good field position from the 45 to start this, and we'll go five wide, look into the air on first down. And Oh, Marquise was wide open, but we're getting hit as we throw, and their pressure is just so strong right now. It's a genius strategy because we get a lot of our passing yards through deep balls, so... Uh, you don't allow us the time to wind up and throw one deep, then we're going to struggle to pass. So, smart idea from Florida. Incompletion on first, and the, that carry puts us in a third down. And we will go to the air on this one, although, again, not really looking too deep. And the running back open, Mike Fontaine. Sometimes has butterfingers, but he holds on to that one. I think any time Fontaine catches the ball, we have to reward him. So, we'll give him a run to open up this set and plenty of space to work with, but it closes quickly. Uh, still very much happy with four yards. How about this second and six? Do we think we can burn them with the play action? There we are bringing, oh my gosh, a lot of pressure. And again, Raid on no time to get the throw off. It's a massive sack once again for the Gators. Pat Lawrence there, it's his second sack of the game and he has had no opposition getting into the backfield and getting to our quarterback. It's really a shame. Trying to wait on this one. We throw it up, and Marquise makes the catch through the contact. 30 yards downfield to keep this drive alive. That was one of those ones where I just threw it up and tried to see if we could get him there. It worked out in our favor, and now running the ball. Mike with a lot of space. Gets a great nine yards inside the 10-yard line. We'll keep it on the ground on this second and one. Running the counter, getting upfield. J.J. Barr on his first carry of the game. Gets us that first and goal at the one. We'll go ahead and just use this maybe as an opportunity to uh, kind of pad the stats of Raid on. Randell taking the QB sneak into the end zone, and we increase that lead to 15. Uh, it's going to start to get a little bit scary for Florida here if they want to win. Gators are definitely going to have to deal with the possibility of this being their fourth loss of the season, uh, which would probably still keep them in the top 25 the way that this season is going right now. Solid job from our kickoff team, and we will put uh, Florida at the 20-yard line to start their drive. Bring in pressure. We get to the quarterback, but he gets the pass off in time. Spencer Stanley can't get the tackle, and they get nine yards. This tight end's having a good game. Really disappointed that we couldn't shut that one down. A chance to get the sack, but it's not to be. Oh, man. Oh, okay. That was weird. I expected a draw, and then they throw it, but we got lucky and stopped them. I am going to call the exact same blitz on this third and one. Again, expecting the run. There's the handoff, and the pressure works to perfection. Nowhere to go for Florida, and they're going to have to give us the ball once again. If I'm being honest, I am incredibly confused how the defense is playing this well today, but struggled so much against Mizu of all teams. That was not a good Mizu team, but they took us, uh, well, to the brink of insanity. Marquise Jackson on the punt return has something to say, and he's got us inside the red zone. Not much going well for Florida at this point. We'll go with read option on first down. Radon has some blockers in front of him looking towards the edge, and... We'll slide down. Again, we got to keep him healthy. Make sure we can get to the playoffs with him. Coming out in the bubble to see how they line up. And I do not like that. So we will audible away from it. Put J.J. Bohr on kind of a deep out route. And run this Marquise open. Holds on through the contact. First and goal. Three and a half yards to pay dirt. We're going to run it right up the middle. Florida looks prepared for it. Who's going to be the stronger team? It's the Teal Boys this time. Mike Fontaine muscles his way into the end zone. And the lead continues to increase in this third quarter. I have made a slight mistake. And I accidentally... Uh, well, uh, I called the two-point conversion. We're going to run it. Screw it. Why not? Oh, no. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> the 
uh, 91 has no opposition today. Well, it's now just a 21 point lead. A uh, little bit disappointing. Could have been 23, but three scores this late in the game feels like it should be just about insurmountable. I don't know if I read this statistic right, but I believe the defense has only given up 132 yards to this point. This is going to be a draw that's going to get them, well, 10, 15 more. But still pretty good so far. How about on this one? I'm expecting passes on so many of these plays, but they keep handing the ball off. And so we're kind of selling out to stop the pass and they have an easy time getting yards there. Certainly they're not going to run it three times in a row. Oh no, or maybe they are. <laughs> Oof, I'm selling right now. All right, fool me three times. Uh, you get the blitz. Try to bring the pressure. They are going to hand it off and... Well, apparently that's all it takes to stop them is just rush a lot of guys right up the middle. Still in the hurry up for the Gators after this one. Uh, I assume after the stop, they're not going to go for it. No, this is going to be a run up the middle. Will Phillips is there though, and that's a big hit to force the third down. And believe it or not, we injured the running back on that play. That is terrible news if you're a Florida fan. Uh, maybe great news for us. He was doing some damage. Certainly alleviate some of the problems. They're going to throw it up in Franklin way too far away. Not a chance to make a play on the ball. They get the first down. This is getting a little bit frustrating because I would really love to keep them out of the end zone on this game, but they're doing a fantastic job uh, preventing us from stopping them. <laughs> I don't think that sentence made sense, but I said it. Well, second and six. This one's got to be a run, right? Yep, out towards the edge. Unfortunately, Don Riley can't get there. And Kale Mackey gets to him, but he's going to get to the 11. Let's uh, see what the safeties have to say about this. Bring in the safety blitz. The pressure gets there. It's not enough. Keenan Kramer into the end zone. That was a quick pass. Our coverage broke down a little bit too quickly there. I got to say half of this is just Florida is running a relentless hurry up against us right now. Uh, torn shoulder for that running back out for five weeks. That might as well be the rest of the season for Florida. That is insanely disappointing for them, and the Gators are going to be really disappointed. Marquise breaks a couple of ankles, but only gets to the 25. And we are going to start this drive with the end of the third quarter. Trying to go to the air. It looks like they want to bring pressure, and they will, so we're going to run with Radon outside the pocket. Plenty of room to work with, unfortunately for us. Oh, wow. <laughs> he fumbled that ball. Unfortunately, no blocking, but fortunately, the ball just went out of bounds. Up 14 with one quarter to play. Uh, a touchdown on this drive surely would be enough for the win. We've got to make sure that we execute. Good first down that we get to work with on this one. And we're going to run it up the middle. Giving it to Mike. He's having a decent game, but he's got nowhere to go on that attempt. I'm not a huge fan of this second and nine. But again, stepping back to throw. And B's going to be wide open if Marquise can get it there. And he manages to get in place for the ball right on through a good one. That's a good first down. Across midfield into Florida territory. We will run the ball again up the middle. We have some blocking. Oh, that should have been a couple more yards. Again, though, never going to be upset with a seven-yard first down carry. It would probably be wise for us to be running the ball a lot at this stage in the game. So that's the game plan. Mike Fontaine. Oh, my gosh. He was just part of like a... A flying V of chickens there. And he ends up with a big carry. Uh, okay, that was weird. I love it. Let's go to the air. Play action on first down. The pressure coming. Oh, just throwing it up and it might have been disastrous. I was just worried about taking the sack, so I just hit the first button I could. We're lucky it wasn't intercepted. Our offensive line is just getting exposed today, so I'm terrified. Looks like they want to bring pressure with the safety. We paid that. No mind. We'll run it. Oh. I didn't bounce it far enough to the edge quick enough, so only a yard. This is a tough spot to be in. Third and nine with 4.20 to go. Uh, well, it's not going to be a tough spot to be in if Bo Lamb just catches it and gets us a first down. Had a whole spiel prepared for if we uh, had to take the field goal, but I didn't need to because Bo bailed us out, and Mike Fontaine gets another good carry up the middle. And this clock is starting to get dangerously low for the Gators. Until they can prove they can consistently stop the run right now. We're going to keep doing it. And right as I say it, JJ loses two yards. Third and eight. 
We keep getting put in these third down spots, and I don't like it. Although, I do like this play. Expect Mike Fontaine to be open in the corner of the end zone. There he is, and he holds on to it, even through the contact. That wasn't an easy throw from Radon. Made it while on the run, uh, but it works out, and we break a school record for passing touchdowns in a season. Oh, the first domino in the top 10 has fallen this week. Nebraska loses a close one to Minnesota. And Radon now up to 30 passing touchdowns with a lot of games left to play on this season. So I expect him to absolutely shatter that record, just like we did to that guy's bones. Well, I hate to say it, but I don't think Florida man's going to be able to win this game. First and 10. And they'll step back, looking to pass. They throw the screen, and oh, Taylor couldn't get the tackle. Smith misses. Well, let's not speak too soon. We got to make sure that we keep them out of the end zone again here. Kind of exclusively playing to stop the pass right now. Hopefully it works. Oh, there we go. Taylor gets to that sack. Makes up for the wrong on the last play. All right, second and 14 now, five wide. What can they do? They step back, looking to throw. Quarterback's going to decide to run again, and Kale Mackey lays the smack down on him and forces the third and 11. Florida really loves this hurry up today, though. We are not in our uh, a good set maybe to stop this. An out route could really do damage to us, but we bait them into the short throw, and it's enough to force the fourth down. I expect them to go for this, though. The game on the line for the Gators on this play. Fourth and five. Just got to hope for the best. They're looking to throw. Somebody's open. And oh my gosh, how do we have eight guys in coverage and somebody is that wide open? A little disappointing. Under two minutes, Florida converts on fourth down. Keeps their hopes alive in this game. Probably for not much longer. And there is, oh, almost a great catch, but he couldn't hold on to it one-handed. Florida's offensive line has honestly been very good so far this game, but we're really going to test them. A safety blitz here on second and 10. Trying to jump the snap, but I screwed up. So just one safety is going to go on. Make sure that they don't get too much. And I don't like that. Gave up 20. Problem is we have a lot of backups subbed in right now just because of this hurry up that we've been facing. And it's really not working to our favor. Uh, No explanation there. Almost gave up the touchdown. At least the clock is kind of still burning. I'm going to take a timeout. Uh, we need to make some subs. Almost every single one of our backups was in. And with the hurry up, we couldn't make the sub out. So take the timeout, get the starters in, and have a chance to get the stop. And we just missed the tackle. David Moore gets into the end zone. Florida technically not out of this one yet. I don't know what I was thinking, but I came out in the normal kick return and had to burn our second time out to get the hands team out. And the hands team has done nothing for us. Oh, wow. Williams just barely, barely gets his hands on that one. That was nearly a disaster. I legitimately don't understand this game. The recording cut out right after we recovered the onside kick. Um, so Florida has one timeout left. We got a first down on the first run. And well, okay, Radon's gone. At least we know that this is recording. That was a beautiful run. Gets us over 100 yards on the day, which is good for the recruiting. And, well, it also makes Radon look that much better. Uh, we increase the lead back up to 21. Well, the good news is you guys really didn't miss anything. Again, it was a run up the middle for 10 yards. And then uh, another run up the middle for a loss of a yard. Nothing irks me more, though, than looking over at my OBS to see that it is not recording anymore. Always a moment of panic as I have to realize how long it's been since it was last working. That one was almost intercepted by Don Riley. Florida still desperately trying to win this. They're in the hurry up. They're spiking the ball. They're doing everything in their power to get this win. This is the Gators' first week in the top 10, I think, this season, or at least, uh, you know, since they've just now gotten back into it. And... Well, they're going to be right back out almost immediately. Durham Finch missing the tackle. Oh, that one could have been really bad if Mario Sharp was just a little bit faster. This is like one of the most unrelenting hurry-ups we've ever seen. 52 seconds left. They snap the ball again, and, well, they find a man, and they get out of bounds, so that's going to stop the clock. I don't know why, but it's always so funny to me how desperately these teams try in the closing stages of the game. Uh, David Moore just throws the pass away. How about on this third and three? Maybe we can just get off the field without consequence? No, they're trying so hard they're even running it to pick up the first down. Almost pathetic at this point. 
There are 37 seconds, and you were down three touchdowns. I hate to say it, Floor, but, uh, but I don't think that you're going to win this game. Apparently, they don't want to hear any of that, though. And they are just going to continue this drive, going down the field, looking for it all. And, well, they, I mean, they are doing all right. Wouldn't be surprised if they ran it here. Some sort of QB draw, but I won't expect it. We'll just see if we can stop the pass. I doubt it. And, yeah. All right, still not over. Gosh, they're making us work for it. Gosh dang it, I did it again. I'm just so used to doing the return down the middle, so I, I'm just not going to take the time out. Our hands seem not out onto the field. We'll see if these guys do any better. And, yeah, well, Franklin says, I got you, coach. Holds on to it immediately. Well, as is tradition around here, when another team does not give up on the game, neither do we. And we're going to throw one deep, looking for everything on this play, or looking for a lot. We find Malcolm Williams, and <laughs> if they want to pad the stats, so can we. Look, they're even taking timeouts. Just 15 seconds to go. We'll hand it off to Mike Fontaine. If he gets a lot, maybe we take the timeout, but, uh, well, yeah, we are going to take the timeout. I don't know how many running yards we have, but if that dropped us below 100, that could be pretty devastating. So, second and 13, no timeouts, 11 seconds. We'll go with another counter. Let Mike Fontaine pick up a lot on the ground, and he's got the first down, and, well, this is a chance for us to score as time expires. What can we do? Hoping for the best, throwing it up. Oh, it should have been picked off. Time expires. We end the game with an incompletion, but with a big victory, 41-27. to 27. As hard as Florida may have tried, they could not come out on top in this game. So we get the win, and we're close to leveling up again. Right on, player of the game, 178 yards passing, 57 on the ground. Lots of touchdowns. Pretty pedestrian game from him, but it's enough for us to beat a top 10 opponent at home in front of some recruits. And I got to say, that was, uh, I don't know, it was a lot more fun of a game. Not as mind-breaking as the game against Mizu. So I got to say, I enjoyed it. It ends up as a pretty solid game for us. We started with a lot of good defense in the first half and ended the game with a lot of good offense. Uh, 147 rushing, 178 passing. We gave up way more yards than we should have, uh, so a little bit disappointing there, but no turnovers for us, and we were able to just get the job done. Radon is our offensive player of the game. Defensively, it's Kale Mackey with his tackle for loss and his sack. Although I think, again, I would probably give it to somebody else. Uh, we had a lot of uh, tackles for loss. I'm fairly certain somebody had like three. Probably a little bit more important to the game. Uh, but again, we come out on top 11-0. And, uh, well, we get a move towards Notre Dame. A big rivalry for us. As a, as a commenter pointed out in the last video, we have played Notre Dame four times in this series. They have all been very, very important games for us but we're 4-0. We level up. Walter Moore, the 76 overall running back and the 69 overall defensive tackle. Kendrick Adams commit and Keith Carey, a 64 overall defensive tackle. So a good visit for us. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of XP. No wonder we leveled up. Coach of the year finalist. Finalist for the Heisman, Blitnikoff, Lombardi, Outland, Remington, Thorpe, Jet, Nagurski, Butkus, Bednarik, Maxwell, O'Brien, Walter Camp were ranked number one. That is, that is a lot going on right there. Uh, Unfortunately for Notre Dame, I plan on making that 4-0 a 5-0. This is the first time we will play the Fighting Irish while they are unranked and they are having a bad season. 7-4, we are favored to win this, even though I'm pretty sure they're a 99 overall team. Uh, so just not very impressive as they have, let's see, a loss to the number two team. And then they've lost three straight. We're going to make it four straight for Notre Dame to end their season, which is really disappointing for them. So we stay up on top. Clemson just beat South Carolina. Uh, that puts them at number two still. Any losses? We know that Nebraska lost. Number six, Tennessee takes a loss to Cal. Uh, there's Florida losing. Uh, Nebraska drops out. Illinois, TCU, and Rutgers also taking some losses. So a few top 10 teams falling, a little bit of a mix up, but nothing too absurd as again, we are still the only undefeated team. And man, I'll tell you what, it does feel good. Heisman watch is Marquise and Radon still. No movement in this past week, which isn't too surprising. Pretty pedestrian game. 
from both of our guys. Looks pretty pedestrian for the other players as well. I'm actually surprised. James Todd had a pretty solid game, picking up four touchdowns, three of 36. Uh, yeah, nothing too crazy. Uh, we got to look forward towards next week, though, where I'm expecting us to get a, uh, another victory. We're certainly going 12-0 this season. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no way that we can lose this game. And, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe I should be a little bit worried about jinxing us, but I feel supremely confident. So, unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. Again, if you enjoy this video, please feel free to hit the like button. Uh, and subscribe as well. Both of those two things do a tremendous job at helping grow this channel. And uh, I mean, I know I keep saying it, but the sh support that you guys have shown recently has been phenomenal. So uh, I appreciate that. Thank you guys. And while you're down there, you can head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash as well as links to my Twitter, our community discord, and as always the college football revamped mod. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster, you guys are the TO boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios!